and our Western North Carolina farmers. These folks are tremendously resilient. Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to the Comstock Channel. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. It's a pleasure to have you with us. As always, make sure you like these videos, subscribe to the videos. How do you do that? Well, you click on that little bell icon down below and then we'll notify you every time we have a new update. And share these videos with others as well. Thanks to you, we are still one of the fastest growing ag podcasts out there anywhere. And it's all thanks to you for helping to share the message. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Well, we're going to have a, a serious discussion today. I have Sean Harding with me, and he is the president of the North Carolina Farm Bureau. And of course, we're going to be talking about the remnants of uh, Hurricane Helene and its aftermath there in the Appalachian areas. Western North Carolina was hard hit. Sean, I'm, I'm sure that you're probably occupied most of your day with dealing with the, uh, the fallout after the hurricane went through. All kinds of damage, all kinds of relief efforts that have to be supervised and that sort of thing. Let me ask you off the top, uh, because that damage kind of straddled the North Carolina and Tennessee borders, are you also working with the surrounding states there too? Yes, absolutely. And um, thank you, Marlon, for reaching out. Uh, we, You know, that's one of the great things about Farm Bureau. Um, we certainly have Farm Bureaus in every county in our state, but we also have other state Farm Bureaus. And and uh, so immediately, uh, Tennessee Farm Bureau reached out, and we have a great relationship with those folks. Uh, and just start talking about how we could work together on uh, relief efforts. Uh, also, Georgia uh, Farm Bureau, this is, uh, has been hit really hard. Um, and then uh, there's three or four counties up in Virginia that are up in that, that corner as well. So, um, you know, I think North Carolina has received a lot of the national attention, but other states are, are certainly hurting as well. And, and we'll, we'll work together with, uh, with anyone to try to, to get some relief. Well, I'm sure people are reaching out to you from uh, all over the place. Uh, hmm. You know, I, I know you have um, um, coverage of property and, and that sort of thing. You also have advocacy that your organization does on the part of farmers. And I, I think you also work together with the uh, Department of Agriculture there, the State Department of Agriculture. Um, are you actually able to uh, kind of have some synergy there in some of the work that you do to help bring some relief out there? You know, Marlon, what I've been telling people is, uh, unfortunately, this is not our first go around. Um, it certainly is a bad storm, uh, but, you know, we had Hurricane Florence in 2018. Uh, we've had hurricanes before then. Uh, mostly those are on the coast, but this is obviously in western North Carolina. Um, what that has allowed us to do, though, over many, many years is form just some great partnerships with the uh, Department of Ag, uh, with our Extension Service, which is one of the best in the country, um, and, and just have people that know, okay, here's a storm, here's what we're most likely going to be dealing with, and how can we help? And so uh, we have uh, immediately, uh, you know, coordinated with the Department of Ag, we're, you know, uh, talking with those folks, what do you need, um, and how can we help? And and so that's what we do in North Carolina. That's what we've done. Uh, I'm not to say, obviously, we'll always look back after this and say, how could we be better, and how could we, uh, you know, work work more efficiently. Uh, but we certainly have a lot of people who do a lot of things. And then I would have to add also, what Farm Bureau is is family, and so. When family looks around and sees others hurting, uh, you, you're exactly right. Not only within the state of North Carolina or county farm bureaus, especially in the east who've been through this, are reaching out to help their western neighbors. Uh, but I've got friends, uh, state farm bureaus in Texas and uh, in the Midwest and in other places that are reaching out and saying, you know, how can we help? And so that that. It's encouraging, even in a in a desperate time. Is the American Farm Bureau Federation able to come in and, and offer some help too? You know, I think what American Farm Bureau has done um, is is really reach out to us as a state and say what what can we do. And the first thing we did was put out those resources on our website. Uh, American Farm Bureau share that with other groups, um, and so you know. Um, for Farm Bureau, and whether it's American Farm Bureau or even North Carolina Farm Bureau. Our role is is more long term. Uh, we are not set up. Not I'll be the first to admit we're not set up to be, you know, making meals for people who have nothing to eat. 
that's where your Red Crosses, Samaritan Purse, um, Baptist on Mission, these groups that we support are in there doing that right now. Um, but we have a very important role to play long term. And I think that's the message I'm trying to share with people is that, uh, you know, as maybe another storm is coming as we talk about this, uh, the news cameras will move on eventually. Uh, and so we need to be ready to step in and, and uh, help farmers in the long term uh, to rebuild these farms. Well, and I know from my own experience out there, um, the North Carolina Farm Bureau uh, has bar none one of the best communications departments I've ever seen. Uh, terrific studios. Uh, they have great staff, great personnel, and they really get the message out. And and as you say, North Carolina is actually basically three different states. You have the coastal areas, you have the Piedmont in the middle, and then you have the mountains in the western part. Totally different agriculture, but uh, I think your membership is one of the biggest state memberships in the country, isn't it? Second largest to Tennessee, or our neighbors to the to the west. And but I want to correct you one thing, Marlon. We are one state, okay. And and I I know what you mean uh, with our geographic, the coast and the Piedmont and the west. Uh, but we are one state. We're one farm bureau. We're one people. Um, when one person hurts, we all hurt. Uh, and so that's what we're seeing throughout our organization is that, you know, these coastal counties that have dealt with this so many times and had help from the West are now getting uh, the opportunity to return that favor. And so um, I'm most impressed with our young farmers. Uh, so our young farmers have, have jumped in and, and they're just doing incredible work, whether it's with drones now delivering supplies to people. Uh, we've got young farmers who, you know, took it upon themselves to just jump in and take supplies. And so just really impressed with our young people. Have they found any resistance to uh, offering help out there in the West? I don't think there's any resistance. Uh, I would share, and I think this is not to be, everybody would expect this, communication is hard. You know, communication is really hard. And so when communication is hard, sometimes coordination can be hard. And so I had one county president tell me, uh, I was talking to him on the phone. He said, Mr. Harding, there's a lot of people here standing around wondering what to do. <laughs> so as you can imagine, and I can imagine, and I've actually lived through these storms, sometimes it can be uh, hard to get help where it's needed. And that's a communication piece. And I think that might be a lesson that we'll all learn after this storm uh, you know, whether it's connectivity or the power of social media, the power of these kind of uh, new media that we have is, is how do we, how do we fix the connectivity piece? Now, we're also talking, and you mentioned the terrain. Uh, we're talking about a place that's pretty remote before this, you know, before a storm. So that has to be a part of this equation as well. And you're talking about Western North Carolina. One thing that you have always done a great job of with that organization is uh, connecting the urban and the rural citizens of the state out there. Yeah. And uh, I would imagine that's probably a large part of what you're continuing to do now that uh, they really don't have much of a voice in the western part of the state, as you say, because of the communications being down. Maybe you can kind of help fill that void a little bit. No, absolutely. As you mentioned, uh, over... 650,000 members across the state, member families. Uh, many of those are urban members and there are members just like our rural members. And so we, we're you know, trying to pull everybody together in, in the same space. And, and I think we've seen a lot of that. Um, you know, I've had, I've had calls from the business community reaching out to me, how can they help? Uh, and so I think all of North Carolina hurts for our Western uh, friends, whether it's farmers or, or just folks who, who have businesses that were destroyed that we, we've seen, uh, and we want to try to reach out and help. I'm going to guess you have members in grain and livestock production, uh, probably some specialty crops. I know you have a lot of Christmas trees out in the mountains too, right? Yes. Uh, the, the mountains is one of the most fantastic agriculture areas in the state. And, you know, you mentioned Christmas trees, but the apple orchards that are up there, uh, that just been devastated, things we've never seen before, never never thought about an apple orchard just washing away. Um, and, and so 
that's a real tough deal when, you know, I grew up as a commodity farmer, grain farmer, you, you lose your crop, that's bad, uh, but you're going to plant again in the spring, right? In an apple orchard, you're talking about a five, six, seven year return on investment, if then, and, and so it's a long-term project. Uh, so my, my heart just hate, uh, aches for those uh, apple growers. Christmas trees the same way, long-term uh, long term commitment to that crop. Um, you know, we have quite a bit of, of livestock in Western North Carolina. Uh, you know, just about everybody has a few beef cows and, and uh, or some have more than a few. Uh, that's been tough um, from what, and this, as of this morning, I, I don't know that we've lost a lot of cattle, uh, but the fencing issues are gonna be tremendous. And so that's, that's one of our, um, our number one issues right now is how do we get fencing supplies there to, to help get Roundup cattle and get them back where they're supposed to be. So do you act as a facilitator if somebody has supplies and somebody needs supplies? Can you kind of help get the two together somehow? I tell you where our role really is, is it can be uh, more financing of that. <laughs> and so sometimes the Department of Ag can say, hey, we got this person who wants to donate some money. We'll take the money, shift it over to our partners at the Department of Ag, and then maybe extension would be the people who have the supplies who actually get it to the the, the right people. Um, we found that lane, uh, and that really works well. Uh, we have, as, as I mentioned, our foundation set up ready to to take those resources and uh, and make sure they go to trusted partners and, and people get the help they need. Well, I appreciate you taking time to talk with us here, Sean. I know it's a, a dire situation, but uh, my gosh, I mean, we're not even through hurricane season. And now, of course, we're looking at one headed for Florida once again. And I'm sure we'll have some uh, similar uh, issues down there coming up later this week. But I, I thank you for what you're doing. And uh, once again, for... Uh, anybody out there that's watching this anywhere in the country or anywhere around the globe, um, where would you direct them if they want to maybe financially offer a little help? Well, our our website has those uh, links to it uh, immediately. And as I mentioned, our partners, uh, we partner with this group, Baptist on Mission. And one of the reasons that we partner with them is, is they a lot of our members go there to be put in a place to work and and so we, we've done that. We've actually uh, helped buy supplies for them so that they can uh, go out and, and clean up farms. Uh, but Samaritan's Purse, Red Cross, these groups are doing uh, good work, uh, helping to feed people and get the humanitarian needs met right away. I mentioned that, Marlon. And then our foundation, we look at as a long-term approach. And so, uh, you know, going back to 2018 with Hurricane Florence, uh, we were helping farmers a year after to reseed pasture and those kind of things. So the the need will be ongoing, and and that's where our role as Farm Bureau and our our foundation is to look at the long term needs of these farms and you know how can we help them rebuild uh, and and go back at it. And I'll I'll just add to to say this that uh, there's nobody in my state. Uh, that will be able to do this any better than our Western North Carolina farmers. These folks are tremendously resilient. I know that word gets used a lot today, uh, but I'm telling you, these these are tough, tough people, and, and they're going to get through this, and they're going to be okay. Well, I know the uh, Farm Bureau organization, being the, the largest by far uh, ag organization in that state, uh, you do an excellent job of being the voice for uh, agriculture out there. And I know you can help communicate uh, the issues that they're facing out there with maybe the elected representatives or further up the chain and uh, kind of help steer uh, the help and financial aid or whatever to where it needs to go and uh, be the voice for the people out there that really are hurting. So thanks for everything you do out there, Sean. We wish you all the best. Thank you, Marlon. Sean Harding with us, president of North Carolina Farm Bureau. Well, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks again for joining us. I appreciate that so much. For producer Brianne Hendrickson, I'm Marlon Bowling. We'll catch you next time right here 
on the Comstock channel. Thanks for joining us on our Comstock YouTube channel. Don't forget you can also find us on Facebook and TikTok as well. Futures trading involves risk. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results.